Hi, good morning, and welcome back to another uh, edition of Discover History here at the Keys History and Discovery Center. I'm curator Brad Bertelli, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Henry Perrine and the Tropical Plant Company. Um, if you have questions or comments, Erin is manning the phone slash camera, and she'll be happy to relay, to relay those to me. Uh, otherwise, I will um, get to them later on in the afternoon. Uh, so today, we are uh, talking a little bit more about Henry Perrine. I know I brought him up in the past. He's, got a, he's a great story. Uh, he is most readily remembered as a, one of the people who were killed during the Indian attack on uh, Indian Key on August 7th, 1840. And the reason that he was on Indian Key in the first place was um, due, to a health, due, due to health reasons, he uh, needed to live in warmer, a warmer climate and had accepted the position as a US consul and on the Yucatan Peninsula in the Campeche region, actually in Tabasco, Mexico. Um, and that was a 10-year post um, from the beginning of 1827, so from 1827 to 1837. And while he was stationed in Tabasco, Mexico, um, he uh, received a letter from the president who sent out a, uh, a letter to all of the 100 consuls around, around the, the world asking each of these consuls to look into the local flora and to, to find out what kind of plants might be beneficial back home to America. And out of this hun these hundred consuls, Henry Prine was the only one who took the, the uh, directive seriously because he loved plants, he was a medical doctor, and one of the things that he did when he traveled from, uh, from, 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 from place to place as he was working on his practice was he would always look into the local plants and to find out what, you know, what the community was doing with, uh, with the botanicals in terms of uh, medicinal purposes. So, so studying the local flora and local you know, botanicals was right up his alley. And he, um, because his job as the US consul down in Tabasco didn't require a great deal of time, mostly he was responsible for you know, uh, tracking uh, all the cargo that was coming in from the U.S. or going or, or going out or, or going to the U.S. So we had time to wander through the local villages and markets and meet the people, meet the, the local villagers. He did uh, uh, in, in his free time um, administer medical practice, his medical practice uh, for, for the villagers. And as he was doing so, one of the things that he learned was that most of the medicines that were being used were done from local plants. And once the villagers recognized his interest, they would, you know, bring him samples. This, this, leaf, this leaf, you know, helps soothe aches. This leaf will, you know, help help with help with, you know, uh, gastronomical issues. Um, and, and he learned more and more. And also, as he was studying these plants, he began to to take notes. Uh, box up seeds, box up plants, and send them both to friends in New York who were horticulturally minded, and also to two, two men who we had not met in the Florida Territory. One of these men was uh, James Dubois, or John Dubois. He was the uh, lighthouse keeper at Cape Florida and Key Biscayne, and also to Charles Howe, who became his partner in the Tropical Plant Company at, at Indian Key. Now, during the course of, 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 of his sending all these plants, um, the, the, his, his garden, his, his temporary nurseries up in, in Cape Florida, those were uh, largely destroyed in an 1835 hurricane. And then during the second escalation of the Seminole War, uh, that lighthouse was attacked in 1836, and it was not deemed a safe place to go. Um, the, the, uh, his nursery on Indian Key with Charles Howe survived much better, and it, it wasn't to his knowledge, he felt it was a safe place to go, and um, he would end up uh, coming out after, after, his, uh, after his post as a U.S. Consul ended in 1837, he decided to move to Indian Key and to move forward with his, uh, his tropical plants. Now, as he left uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, he ended up stopping in Key West for a month. And while in Key West, he met Judge James Webb. And it was Judge James Webb who wrote, wrote the document out that incorporated the Tropical Plant Company with three trustees. And those trustees were Dr. Henry Perrine, Charles Howe of Indian Key, and then also Judge Webb. And interesting, uh, 
Perrine was a, a writer, uh, liked to write a lot of letters, and, 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 and he, was very, he was also opinionated and had some really interesting uh, comments about the people of Key West. Um, he talked about uh, Judge Webb as being the only citizen of, of the island who was um, you know, suitable to become a, a member, you know, to help, help in, this, in this tropical plant company. Not the last time he would make comments about people, the people of Key West. Um, so, um, in 1838, uh, in the midst of the second escalation of the Seminole War, he, Prine is up in New York with his family, wants to come down to Indian Key, to the Florida Territory, to be closer to his plants. Um, but the Secretary of the Navy, who's a friend of his, uh, uh, Poinsett was his name, is, um, advises against it, saying, you know, it's, it's too dangerous, don't go. Uh, but Henry Prine insisted comes down and arrives on Indy Key with his wife and three children on Christmas Day in 1838. And from there, he begins to really start to develop his tropical plant company. And he would be responsible for introducing uh, 72, approximately 72 uh, plants from from uh, the, Me the Mexico, the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula, Mexican area. Today, uh, Today, those would be, would be known as invasive species. It wasn't a big deal back then. And some of the really important uh, plants and trees and shrubs that he introduced to uh, the Florida Territory, among them was the mango, uh, the avocado, and also uh, the, the mulberry, which was, which, which, uh, was a really, which was not, it, the mulberry was not a native to uh, Mexico, um, but it had been introduced to Mexico and was in the area. And the mulberry was really uh, interesting and he felt it was an important cash crop, be, not, not so much for the mulberry and the berries themselves, but because the white mulberry was the primary food source for the silkworm. And the, so the silkworms would, you know, sp sp spin their cocoons, which become the, becomes the valuable uh, textile of silk. Um, so uh, those are three of the important, or three of the 72 that he introduced. Also, the, another important cash crop that he wanted to introduce, or he did introduce, was sisal agave. And today, sisal agave grows crazy on Indian Key, which is, is still there. And the, and the sisal was important because of the hemp that was inside the, inside the, the kind of the bayonets, the, uh, the leaves of, of, the, uh, of the plant, um, because you could, of, the, of the hemp that you could take out of it and make rope, which was the primary industry, or the primary use of the sisal was to make rope, but you'd also make you know, uh, uh, clothing and also um, like mats and other, other things. So it was between the, um, the mulberry and the sisal agave, those were probably the two most important cash crops that Prine introduced and wanted to develop in his tropical plant company which was going to be on the mainland, but he couldn't get to the mainland because of the second escalation of the Seminole War. Now today, um, there is a, 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 a town or a small city called Perrine, Florida, which is south of Miami, uh, south of Kendall, kind of north of Homestead, called Perrine, Florida, and that is kind of in the Cutler, the Cutler Bay, Cutler Ridge? No, it's Cutler. Cutler Bay, <laughs> Cutler Bay area, um, and that would have been home to uh, to the tropical plant company had uh, history not done what it did, and um, uh, and Henry Perrine would end up losing his life during the attack on Indian Key in 1840, and um, so the tropical plant company never really came to fruition. It was later developed by by his uh, children, but. Um, that was uh, not, not, not the dream that Henry Perrine uh, envisioned. Now, one of the plants that Perrine um, is given, credited, given credit for introducing is the key lime, or, or as, as it was known in those days as just the lime. And what, what, um, what we've learned, what I've learned, and, and I've been guilty of saying, of, of saying that, that, that Perrine introduced the key lime as well, um, but, but doing research and looking through uh, other articles and, and discover, and what I discovered, and which is, you know, it's written all there in, in, in the historical record, was that the key lime had already been established in the Florida Territory by the time that Perrine even left the U.S. to go to the Yucatan Peninsula in 1827. There are documents in 1828 talking about uh, these large groves of golden limes growing in, along the Miami River. Um, there's, uh, there are um, uh, 
and this is in 1828, so you know, even if he shipped them as soon as he got there, which didn't happen, it would have taken years for these trees to, to, to grow. And that's um, one of the, another one of the plants that, uh, that, that Perrine is often given credit, credit for, but is not, did not actually happen. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more. Yes, we have a question, or Aaron? Did, did he actually send additional limes back from Mexico, whether or not he was the first person to introduce them? Was that a species, a plant species he was interested in and in sending back to become a part of the tropical? Yeah, Perrine did and did send the, the limes here, but they were already they were already there. You have to imagine that, um, and, and, and one of the in 1829, uh, uh, a man, man named James Egan sets um, who has who had uh, his family had had lots of property in the uh, um, uh, Miami area, who had been given who those were under the. Um, uh, uh, Spanish land grants. He'd been, they had acquired those, pro those, those properties um, as a, a kind of after the Spanish land grants, so they, they own property up, up there. And um, when he sells his, when he sells his, uh, his property, in the advertisement, it talks about um, the property and, and all the great plants and all the great trees that are there, but also all the great groves of limes that, that rival those growing in Cuba. So what probably happened, because the, the key lime is not, is not native, or the lime as it's called, wasn't called the key lime until many years later. Um, the lime is native to Southeast Asia and was probably brought over to the New World uh, by Spanish conquistadors. Some people think Christopher Columbus might have brought it. Um, but it would have been it would have been in in in, in Cuba, which was the headquarters for the Spanish you know, involvement in, in in the New World, and from and from Spain or from from Cuba would have been introduced to uh, to uh, Florida, the Florida Territory. There's even a um, um, uh, there's even one document that uh, that shows uh, the, the key lime being along the Miami River as early as 1799. Um, Henry Prine was born in 1797, so that kind of definitively says that those limes were already there. Is that a hand? So we have a picture <coughs> of Indian key behind you, and we can see that it's a relatively small island. Did they live in their nursery operations just to Indian key, or did they extend onto other islands in the area? In the, uh, the, the big nursery was actually on, on Lower Matacumbi Key. So that's, that's where the, the big nursery was. And in fact, prior to the, uh, just days before the attack on, on, on August 7th in, in 1840, um, Henry Prine had been with one of his daughters at a place they called the Ferry Grotto, which was this large freshwater pool that was nearby uh, the nursery, which would you know, have plenty of fresh water to water his plants. And while they were there, the Indians had actually been in that area at the time, although they did not know that. Um, so that just, just days prior to the attack. And there's, you know, there's so much great stories and great history about, about Indian Key, about the, the, the Florida Keys, and so many great people in, in, in the mix, and, and which is you know, why we're here and what, what we're doing on, on these Facebook Lives and, and, and with, the, with the Discovery Center. There's just, it's a great place to come fish, it's a great place to come, to come drink and enjoy, and enjoy the, you know, the, the warm weather, especially in the wintertime. Uh, you know, I apologize you know, to the rest of the country when we're, it's so beautiful down here all the time, um, most of the time. But um, there is just a tremendous amount of history in this, in the, in the Henry Perrine story, the Indian Key story, the Key Lime story. They're all just great aspects of, of some of the great things that you can learn by visiting the Keys History and Discovery Center. And, um, we, and we are now open. We, since the pandemic, we had to limit our hours, um, well, after, closed down altogether at one point, and, we begin, and, and we've begun to open up you know, back to our, our regular more of our, our regular schedule. So now we are open, uh, we've added Saturdays. So now we're open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to five. Um, please come in, enjoy, enjoy the, the great uh, exhibits we've put together and the, and the, the great um, uh, documentaries we show in our 35 seat movie theater. We have a great partnership with Moat Marine Laboratory with, with, our, with our coral and uh, apparently Larry the Lobster who's, who's become somewhat of an internet star here on our Facebook Live posts. I can't compete with Larry the Lobster. He gets much more views than I do, um, but so is it. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. 
But um, so Wednesday night we have a great a great talk by one of uh, one of Aaron's former professors from the University of Florida, uh, Dr. Knoll, who's going to talk about transportation in the Florida Keys, uh, in, in Florida, uh, so the railroad, the highway, and steamboats too. And it's going to be another great presentation from six to seven on Wednesday night. You can uh, register for that event on our uh, through our Facebook page or or at our website keysdiscovery.com under the uh, uh, lecture lecture uh, tab. Uh, it's free for our free for our members and only five dollars for for guests. So we hope to see you Wednesday night. Otherwise, I will see you next next Tuesday at ten o'clock, and we'll talk more history. In the meantime, you guys have a great week. Thanks so much. <laughs>